Hey there, welcome to another video for the ICM 2.0 Python version. Today we are going to be talking about color. Color is something that you may or may not have stumbled upon on your own. If you haven't, you know that everything we have been doing so far is in black and white. And luckily for us, as we add in color, there's no new functions or no new lines of code we have to learn. We just have to understand how color works on a computer. So the basis of this is our colors in the default setting are in something called RGB color mode, and that stands for red, green, and blue. What this means is your computer is actually mixing light. It's mixing the red light, the green light, and the blue light to make a color on the screen. This is referred to as additive mixing because you are adding light into the mix. What you are used to if you have any sort of art background is called subtractive mixing because you are actually subtracting light and the light that remains is what's being reflected back at you. That is a whole deep world that you are welcome to explore on your own. Things that we should just know off the top of our head is that RGB colors mix a little bit differently than um, when you're doing additive mixing than when you are doing subtractive mixing. That's worth a Google just to get an idea of what their primary and secondary colors are and that our values are gonna look a little different. From going to white to black, you may have noticed that anything above 255, it's just white. It doesn't get any whiter than that. And anything below zero, it just stays black. That's because all of these values are coded between zero and 255, meaning there's 256 possible options for each one. So our R, G, and B are expecting three numbers, each one out of 255. This can be a little unnerving to make up on the spot because if you are not familiar with how those numbers are mixed, there's a very strong chance you might get a little confused um, and mix something weird looking. But lucky for us, there are a number of color pickers out there. I went to Google and I just typed in color picker and we can see I now have this little um, widget where I can move around my cursor. I can set it to different colors. I can choose from different um, hues at the bottom here. I can make it maybe like a nice pink, which I always love using, like a pinky purple. And at the bottom, you'll see that there's several different values which all represent different color representations. I can zoom in a little bit so we can see. The one that we care about now is this RGB, which we see says 18829 and 196. So we're gonna take these numbers and we are gonna try and plug them in to a program to make something colored. So I have gone ahead and I have made a copy of the RGB color starter code from the curriculum that'll be linked in the video description if you'd like to use it. And we're just gonna practice turning our background a color and then we're gonna look at how this can apply to shapes as well. So I know that my background takes a number that represents color. And if I want my background to be this pink, I'd be writing in 188, comma 29, comma 196. Now when I hit play, or run, I'm sorry, I should now see this nice pink background. This is another great moment to pause and try adjusting these back these values. Like if, for example, I were to turn up the green value to 70 to see what happens, or even to turn it up to 120, it starts working towards more of like a lavender, more of a gray color. Um, feel free to experiment with these numbers. Feel free to try the color picker on some other things. And when you're ready, we are gonna try and add some color to these shapes. Now this original activity is intended as a pair programming activity where one person is typing while the other is giving them instructions and then it swaps. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you the first one and you are then work welcome to work through as many more as you can. If you have a friend sitting with you, feel free to take on that original pair programmer role. So you'll see here that we have two lines of ellipses. I did a terrible job at labeling these, but it goes first row, left to right, second row, left to right, just so we have an idea of what'll be changing. For this first one, if I wanted to change the fill of the shape, I would give it three numbers. I can do those off the top of my head. I can do those from my color picker. Whatever makes the most sense to you, you are welcome to try. I'm gonna go ahead and use like this rosy pink. I'm gonna make it a little darker. So I have 150, 21, 75. In my fill, instead of giving it one number, I'm gonna write 150, I already forgot my values, 21 and 75. And then when I hit run, we should see they are all now this red color. And that is only because as we have seen before, the fill's applying to everything until we give them each their own unique fill. If I wanted to change the stroke, I could do it here. 
Um, I'm gonna make this, let's do like a really light pink. Um, oops. I'm doing this off the top of my head because I am pretty familiar with how this mixing works. Uh, let's see if we do 180, 180. I want it to be like a little bit more muted. I think that's still pretty intense actually. About 75 and 75, we'll make it dark. There we go. Went for not what I was thinking. I was gonna do a lilac, but I was too lazy to check it. So we'll have this dark purple. And again, I could be using that color picker as much as I wanted. Once I have colored that shape, I would go and do the same thing with a fill and a stroke for the next one and try and add colors for every single shape. Give it a try, experiment with shapes. The one other thing you should know is that all colors have a secret fourth value. It's called the alpha channel and it controls transparency and opacity. So how see-through that color is. Um, if I were to add it here at like 200, I don't know how much we would notice since there's really no, oops, it's mad that I didn't fill those in. Let me comment those out. I don't know if we would see much of a difference. Um, you can maybe see that it's like blending a little bit more with the background, but it's not insanely noticeable that it's different. Um, 255 I think is fully opaque. Yeah, there we go. So if I put in two, that's decently, that's almost completely transparent. So it's almost like my fill goes away. If I were to put in, I don't know, 50, it's gonna look like a different shade than what I had originally. It's like less of that shade because you're seeing something behind it. If I had a different background color, let's up the blue quite a bit. Uh, I want it even bluer. Uh, you'll see that they start kind of mixing together, which can be an interesting effect for us. Um, and I can keep adjusting this fourth value until I get something I'm happy with. Every shape can have its own fourth value. They can all be different levels of transparent. You do not have to include that in this activity, but it is something that's worth knowing about. Now, RGB color mode is great. I recommend pausing here to give yourself some time to practice, but it is not the most intuitive. You are probably relying on this color picker tool or other tools like the Adobe color picker, which is a great one for building custom color palettes. It'll show you a color wheel. It'll let you choose different color combos. It's wonderful, um, but you're pretty reliant here on finding your R, your G, and your B. And you'll see you can change the color mode to different things. This HSB is actually what we are going to be interested in next. As opposed to RGB, which is mixing three colors, HSB, which I have another sample that we're going to work off of, HSB takes three different values called hue, saturation, and brightness. And we can actually see them in this illustration here. Hue is like the type of color you're using, if it's a green or a red or a pink. Value is how. Um, intense that color is, like how bright it is. Another word for value is um, sometimes brightness, which is where the B is coming from. So things with a low value are going to have a lot of black in them. Things with a high value are going to have a lot of the color, a lot of the white in them. Um, and saturation similarly is like how much of that tone is there. So as opposed to just white and black, how vivid is the color? Lower saturation, you work towards your pastels. Higher saturation, you work towards your neons. Value with more white, it's going to look a little bit brighter. Value with more black, it's going to be a darker version of that color, just to give us an idea. The hues go around in a circle, a 360 degree circle. So it starts at zero, it works its way all the way around back to 360, which is a red. And we can use a wheel like this to help us choose our colors. Now, because these values no longer need to be out of 255, HSB defaults when you're using something like a color picker is going to say that the hue is 360, the saturation is 100, the brightness is 100, and the alpha channel is now out of one. So you're looking at decimal values between zero and one to set that opacity. Um, when we are declaring this in Python, when we want to change our color mode, if there was no, and I should always be making my text bigger, I keep forgetting in this editor, um, if there is no function called color mode, it's always gonna to default to RGB. If we want to make it so that we can use HSB colors, we need to write in this function called color mode where the first argument it takes is the mode we want, which in this case is HSB. 
And then we set the ranges for all of those values. So here I have set it to the defaults of 360, 100, 101. And I would encourage you to do this just so that when you're looking at numbers from a color picker, it makes sense. If for some reason you have a compelling argument as to why these numbers don't work for you and something else does, you are more than welcome to explore that on your own. For our purposes, we're gonna try using an HSB color and we're just gonna see how easy it is to change and adjust that color. So if I run this, it looks very, very similar to what we were just working on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a fill to this ellipse and I'm gonna utilize my color wheel to help me figure out what type of color that should be. So I really like a good like saffron, like ready orange. So I think I'm gonna put my hue at about 27. Um, so I'm gonna head back to my code and put my hue at 27, which should put me like here-ish on my color wheel. And then I want this to be kind of bright, but not like annoyingly bright. And I want it to be pretty saturated, but again, not like annoyingly saturated. So I'm gonna try and set my, my saturation at, let's say 80 to start and my brightness at 75. And I'm going to run it and just see what I get. So it looks like I have this kind of muted orange. If I were to turn up the brightness all the way to 100, it's now like a deeper version of that orange. And if I were to turn up the 75 to 100, it's now like approaching neon. I don't think I want the neon. So I'm going to turn it back down to 75. And I think I'm actually pretty happy with this. I think I like this color orange. So let's make for the outside rim, Let's make a lighter color orange. So I'm gonna go to my fill. I want this to maybe be closer to a true orange. And I can see here that that's about 30. Uh, maybe I want a little bit of yellow in it too. So I'm gonna try, oops, wrong code. I'm gonna try putting my uh, color at like 35. And I'm gonna make both of these numbers really bright. Oh, I did fill again. I should have done stroke, that was silly. Like just overwrote what I did. So now I have the stroke and I actually am really into the way it looks, but if I wanted this brighter color to be a little bit more pastel-y, I could turn down my saturation or my brightness. I'm sorry. Um, nope. Saturation. I had it right. <laughs> I could turn down my saturation to like a 50. So now it's almost like I'm just not mixing as much of that color into the white that is there. And the white is turned way up from the brightness. If I were to put this at more of a 70, it would be light, but it would still be um, just a little, little bit deeper than it was before. It's easier to play with these numbers. Again, you can still go to a color picker and pull those values from HSB. If you are using the Google color picker, you're going to see that it's HSV and you'll see these percentages. It is still the same idea. It is still going to be out of 360 and both of these out of 100 as all percentages are. HSB, exact same as HSB. I'm going to encourage you now to pause, try and add a fill and a stroke to each ellipse using the HSB colors. And if you have not already, try and do the same thing in your other sketch using RGB colors. Both of these are linked in the video description, and I look forward to seeing what your color palette turns out like. Have a great rest of your coding experience, and I'll see you in the next video.